Sally, you, you'll find that uh, uh, many of the things that Ali spoke about, I uh, am firmly in her camp, so to speak. Uh, we uh, uh, agree on many of the issues that surround homelessness. I'll talk more about that. First, I, I'll mention that um, I am distinctly honored to be on this panel today. Uh, I uh, have a, a wealth of experience myself. When I say wealth, I don't mean it's great. I mean a lot of it. Um, and uh, that's what I bring to the panel is my experience and what I believe and what people who I trust, have, uh, people who have uh, earned my trust and uh, uh, helped me to believe. Uh, sitting next to me, we have Ali, who uh, is, uh, believes many of the same things and who carries an old message uh, with a new voice and a new theatrical way of presenting it. And I appreciate listening to Ali uh, and uh, I'm watching the, uh, the way she does, uh, the way she delivers the old message, a message that uh, I've been talking about for a very, very long time. And, uh, and Professor Aban, I'm honored. Uh, I, I don't have a degree from Oxford or a degree from uh, Harvard. Uh, I have a different set of experience, but between the three of us, we should be able to give you a good presentation regarding uh, where we are in Eugene today and where we hope to be for the future. Uh, I'm very pleased to, pa Pastor Dan asked me to be here, and uh, initially it was scheduled for last week, and I thank you for making, being able to accommodate the change. Last week I was visiting uh, Bud Clark Center in Portland, which is a homeless facility. Uh, it's a multi-story homeless facility in downtown Eugene, and I went with a group of folks from, from Eugene. And I uh, saw a very interesting uh, facility, something that we're doing parts of here in Eugene, but we don't have the kind of money that they had in Portland to establish a, such a wonderful facility. We can talk more in detail about that at a different, in a different time, a different venue. There's a lot to be said about what the Clark is doing and what maybe we can uh, begin to emulate here in Eugene. And things that they're doing that we certainly don't want to emulate. Um, but I will say that today we're only going to scratch the surface of homelessness, we're only going to scratch the surface of the right to sleep, or the right to do anything for that matter. We have a very short period of time. We won't be talking very much at all. We'll have a few minutes. Ali said we have eight minutes. Uh, that's uh, roughly about what we have. And how much can you say in eight minutes about what we've done, what we want to do, and what has, what's been done that shouldn't have been done? So I'm going to uh, say this at this point. On October 22nd, I will be having a town hall on this exact same subject. But we'll have more time to talk about it. It'll be at a time where uh, it won't be in the middle of the day where a different group of people perhaps can come and the same group of people can come. The place will be, uh, the place is yet to be announced. I'm going to invite the two panelists who are here with me today to join me. If they're unable to join me, I will ask someone to replace them who has a similar background, similar experience, although certainly not at the peak of their uh, background and experience as my two colleagues are here today. So, we're here on the surface to discuss when and where is sleep a legitimate, uh, when and where is sleep a legal right, I believe is the exact words. And the answer to that really is dynamic based upon where you are and uh, the community you're in and who made the last decision. Now, we can talk about the constitutionalism of it and uh, really the constitution, I'm not an expert on it, and, uh, and every, every generation uh, the uh, debate surrounding the constitution evolves a little bit. Um, and I know that Professor Rodan has a wealth of knowledge there, and I'm hoping to hear more from him regarding that. But really it is dynamic, and whoever made the last decision, quite often is the, the people or the body that determines where it is legal to sleep. Here in Eugene, we have a couple of different jurisdictions that made decisions regarding where is it legal to sleep. Now, Ali mentioned back in 1983, the vacancy task force that is illegal to camp in Eugene. Well, in uh, 1997, we came back uh, to challenge that pretty significantly when I was on the Eugene City Council the first time. And uh, that we uh, founded the uh, Council Committee on Homelessness and Youth, which was uh, originally, it, it was originally uh, basically uh, to, uh, to consider the, uh, the subject of the uh, homeless youth in Eugene. We met for about four years. I was the chair of the committee. There was, uh, the mayor was on the committee at the time, and the city council, Bobby Lee was on the committee, and, uh, uh, the main staff people were in the back of the room right there. Uh, Richie Weinman, who was with the city at the time, and Pearl Wolf, who was, at the time was with the uh, Looking Glass, I believe, who's now with the county. And uh, did a lot of work regarding what is happening with homelessness. How come we have these arcane, archaic, ridiculous laws on the books? And, uh, and why are people being forced to camp down on Washington Street, Washington Street and, uh, and disrupt the neighborhood? as the natives uh, described it. So we began to address some of the issues surrounding homelessness, and we did. Uh, we, uh, we changed the homeless, uh, we changed the camping laws in Eugene significantly, 
And to say there aren't legal places for people camping in Eugene, that's not correct. We did change the law. Uh, you see camping in the parking lots uh, that is sanctioned, that has uh, sanit that have sanitary facilities. You see camping in uh, backyards, which is sanctioned, that have sanitary facilities. And you see camping in church parking lots, etc. So that, does that solve the problem? Certainly not. It barely scratches the surface of solving the problem. But we did other things. We opened Station 7 for runaway youth, for instance. And uh, a number of different, uh, different venues that, uh, that began during the Council Committee on Homelessness and Youth. I have six pages here, and I brought all six. This is six pages of the history of efforts surrounding homelessness in Eugene. On, of these six pages, three of the pages are, uh, pertain to the Council Commission on Homelessness and Youth and the, and the uh, laws that we changed back in 1997, 98, 99, 2000, and, uh, and the ramifications of the laws that we changed. Do we still need to change laws? Absolutely we do. Will we change laws? Once again, it's dynamic. The laws will be changing. Do we need to change laws? You bet we do. Do people need a legal place to sleep? Yes, of course they do. Now, so will the current decisions be made by the Lane, the count, uh, the Lane County Commission regarding the closure of the, uh, the Wayne Moore Plaza for overnight stay? Uh, and will the, the decisions of the city be superseded? Of course they will. And will they be superseded by subsequent bodies? Yes, they will. Or by the courts? Yeah, they will. So if we're here at this point in time right now, and the best thing that we can do is look at the conditions surrounding homelessness and begin to chip away and work with the people in this room, many people in this room whose life it is to work on homeless issues, to provide places for homeless people to eventually call their regular, stable, permanent homes and to help people to not slide into the conditions that surround homelessness. We all know that every single homeless person that you talk to has a very, very different story. Some people have mental illness. Uh, some people are on the streets because of the, uh, the inst <coughs> institutionalization of uh, mental facilities. Some people are disabled. Some people are just out of the job. Some people prefer that lifestyle. Everybody has a different story. We found that during our this debate on the Council Committee on Homelessness and Youth. We had round tables where people told us why they were homeless and why they were homeless in Eugene. We will continue that, dis that discussion. Now, I say that there are people in the audience here whose life it is by working with, the, with people who are uh, suffering from poverty and homelessness. I see Susan Dam in the back, who is uh, with Wayne Shelton. Thank you for being here, Susan, and thank you for the tremendous work you do. Sitting next to her is Beverly Hughes, Food for Lane County. Beverly is the current executive director. I formerly was the executive director of Food for Lane County. Serves uh, seven million pounds of food a year. Thank you for the work that you do. I see Terry McDonald sitting very close up here, St. Vincent de Paul. And I see Pastor Dan saying two minutes to go. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. So there are others in the room. Richard Wyman's back there, Phil Wolf's back there, Steve Manella sitting back there, uh, Peggy Whalen is sitting back there. We have a room full of people whose life it is to serve the people in this community who are in danger or who are at risk. Now, my goal, my stated goal, and I say it over and over again, is as long as a seven-year-old misses a meal, we're not doing my we're not doing our job. And I'm not meeting my goal. Because in this community, we have lots of hungry people, as we have lots of hom homeless people. We need to work with the folks who are already providing the services to provide a broader range of services, to fund a broader range of services, and to really get deep into this issue. So we don't have to, so people, less and less people all the time have to worry about where do I sleep tonight, because they have a more stable place to sleep. That's what we need to focus on, and that's what we'll talk about more from this point forward and for all of the years that I continue in public service.